let's take a break from uh, electrical stuff at the moment and look at electronic stuff again instead. I suppose this really is. I don't know how much is uh, electronic in this. We'll find out when we open it up. This was suggested after I'd done the video on a uh, mosquito killer, an Indian one. And this also came from India, and this is the sort of upmarket one. They do a couple of these. I've got this smaller version, the simpler version as well. So here's the simple all-out that just has the variable lever. And when you actually move the variable lever, you can see the heater block just sliding up and down inside. So as you turn this at a level up, it slides it down further over the wick of the uh, re repellent stuff, the sort of mosquito killer. Which I think, uh, I think it's transfluthrin based again. Not sure. I should have checked that out. Uh, hold on, I'm just going to use the magnifying glass to read this very, very tiny text. Uh, what does it say? Liquid vaporizer, household insecticide, transfluthrin. It is transfluthrin based. So that's a common, sort of fairly harmless insecticide. Well, not to insects, it isn't. So that's the this very simple one that has the just the adjustable level. But this one has a switch on the side, and when you turn it on, this fan starts in the back and it blows it out into the room and just creates a bit of air circulation. It reminds me of an air freshener that was based on the same thing. And given that this uh, is apparently made by Johnson, Johnson, a family company, um, I suppose that probably shares the same pedigree as air fresheners. So this is a box that came in. It's notable that quite a few of these came with very slightly loose tops and uh, had oozed slightly, so the box itself is probably ideal for killing mosquitoes too, just by the aroma it gives off. This is held together by plastic stakes. They've got the little pins that come through and then they've sort of heat staked it to actually rivet it together. So we're going to have to actually drill this open. Let's grab a drill. So here is my drill, and where's the set of drill bits? Here's a set of drill bits. Let's find one that kind of fits. This one's pre-shredded plastic. It's not a bad fit. So let's try the next one up. Okay, let's go for this one. 4.5 millimeter. So I shall pop that into the drill. The drill is full of dust. Oh, I know what I've been doing with this. Mm. Drilling wood. Right, let's see. I was going to go like that, but then that gives people the heebie-jeebies. I shall keep my hand well away from there. Doesn't mean I won't drill my hand, but you, I'll make an effort not to. Oh, you know what? Before I take this apart, shouldn't I be doing the electrical tests on it? Hold on. Let's bring everybody's favourite flickery meter, the Hoppy, in. Uh, I want to check this one now as well. Let's uh, plug this in. So... Plugging this in, it goes up to 47 watts, then 21 watts, 7.7 .7 watts, and prog progressively reduces. Near unit power factor, that suggests it's got the PTC heat element in it, the self-regulating heat, heat element, that as it gets hotter, the power drops. And it's going down to about 5 watts. Does it actually say in this what it's rated at? Three point, is it 3.6 watts? This is the text, and this is tiny, everybody's... All the text is telling these days, 3.6 watt, okay. What's this one rated at? 6 watts, it says. I should mention that this is a fan, and I've tried it on uh, 110 volts as well as 240. And it does self-regulate the heat on 110 volts, but the fan runs a lot slower. So I'm going to plug this in now. Hopefully I've not butchered it. Initially it goes up to, well, I didn't catch that, but it was 29 watts, it's dropping down. So that's the, with the fan off, there's one of the, it's got a PTC heating element. And if I turn it on, the power immediately jumps to about 30 watts again, and then starts falling again. So that's possibly switching another heating element in, or is there a PTC thermistor in series of the fan? I'm not really sure. Uh, the power factor's kind of changed a bit. I'm not sure if that's just the electronic load here or if there's some sort of capacitive dropper element in it. Right, okay, that's enough. I shall uh, unplug it and open it up. Or continue opening it up. So that's three of the rivets, theoretically out. That's one thing I don't like about these uh, high-profile air fresheners. They're very hard to open, probably because they don't want you opening them. Is this going to come apart? 
Am I going to have to pause while I shred things to bits? Let's try some more uh, drilling. Oh, that's better. I thought it might have just been staked quite shallow, but I think they've uh, got quite a, a deep stake in that, so I'll just give them all an extra bit of drilling and then put the drill out of the way. There we go. Oh, oh, look at that. That's a fairly sophisticated looking little circuit board. It's very similar to the, oh, what was the other one that had that exact same heating element? This one. That was, hold on. Do I have another one of those? Give me one moment. Yeah, it's kind of similar, but not quite to the heater block that was out of this one, which had the same sort of aluminium rivet through it that held the thing together. It's got a plastic insulator on one side, the ceramic with the PTC thermistors in it. And then it's got this sort of rivet, uh, which not only holds it together, the aluminium rivet here, but uh, it kind of stops the wick from actually touching the heat, the ceramic directly and wicking into it, I'm guessing. I also noticed a couple of LEDs here. I didn't spot what colour they were. Right, tell you what, I'm just going to plug that back in again. Slightly dubious, I shall proceed with caution. Let's make sure there's nothing metal that I don't want to touch here. Uh, in the off position, a green LED is lit. In the on position, a yellow LED is lit. Okay, now that's that checked. Let's take it to further pieces. Let's see if we can get the circuit board out of this. How does it come out? Oh, well that was easy. Oh, righty ho. So there's a capacitor. My guess is the capacitor, well that block gets quite hot actually. It heats quickly because it is, uh, of course, it's self-regulating. So I see the fan is coming from this area here. I'm, I'm looking for bridge rectifier. I'm not seeing a bridge rectifier. That may actually be, if I slide this up the way, is it going to slide up? How does this come out? Oh, it's kind of latched in. The circuit board actually has a little uh, catch that goes through the circuit board itself. That's quite interesting. I'm not sure if I've seen a circuit board uh, latched in quite that way. So if I undo that, it pops up a bit and comes off. Are there, oh, there, there are diodes in the back. And what looks like uh, some zeners, possibly, across the fan to cap the voltage. Right, this is all fairly crammed here. Oh no, it's not actually. It is coming apart quite easily. What's in here? That's a little resistor, inline resistor. That must be being used as a fuse just in case everything goes horribly wrong. So one uh, lead is coming straight into here. Oh, and actually, you know what? That is a little thermal fuse in case it gets too hot. That's interesting to see. So this uh, has three connections going in. It's got one connection going in under here, one going under here, and then it's got a connection in here. So that I'm kind of suspicious then that this is basically the same arrangement as before, where it's got two PTC elements, one on either side. So uh, this uh, circuit board, it may take a wee moment to reverse engineer, so I may just pause momentarily while I do that to try and work out what's going on here. That took longer than expected because, as always with these clever designs, they get up to some wily stuff and it just makes that a little bit harder to reverse engineer. If you want to try reverse engineering, engineering this yourself, take a snapshot now and you, that's the, I flipped this at the back of the circuit board, the image, that's why the text is all back to front. Just so everything relates. So, for instance, this grey wire here is this grey wire here, and the fan terminals coming off at the bottom here, and the fan terminals coming off at the bottom here. So, if you want to take a snapshot of that, and now I shall just move that to the side and we shall reverse engineer it or go through the schematic because I've done the reverse engineering. It's clever, it's very neat, it's minimalist, and it's, it's just interesting the way they've done this. So, we start off with the protection. We've got the live coming in here. We've got a series resistor, which is a value of 
three uh, orange, blue, black, which is, I should have actually noted this down, three, six and zero, so that's actually 36 ohms. That seems quite high. It does get slightly warm in operation, but not very warm. I'm just going to double check that with the meter right now. Let's bring the meter in and just double check. I thought that might have been the usual sort of 10 ohm value. So let's go in there. It's quite a low value, so I can just grab it with fingers here. Yeah, 36 ohms. Okie dokie, that's fine. 36 ohm, then there's a little uh, thermal fuse. The thermal fuse should actually have its value printed on it. It's tiny, it's 115 degrees Celsius. That doesn't actually seem that high because I measured the surface temperature of that at around about 100 degrees Celsius. Ooh, okay. So uh, 115 degrees Celsius. And then there's a diode, that's this diode here. And that effectively means that the whole circuit is now fed half-wave rectified DC. So that comes down, and the first thing it does, it goes through a permanently connected thermistor, a PTC thermistor, in this uh, ceramic block. And this ceramic block has a thermistor at both sides. Uh, you can actually see in this one where it's got the common connection in the middle. It's got the little uh, sandwich of these uh, blocks of uh, PTC material. The PTC material is a resistive material that the hotter it gets, the higher its resistance goes, so it self-regulates. And what they've done here to hold these in place, they've slotted those in, and then they've put a little spring-loaded shim behind each to actually compress it and hold it together inside here. So that's uh, in this unit when you actually test it, this side, if it's at the low setting, this side heats up, and if it's at the high setting, both sides will heat up. So when you turn this on, initially at the low setting, Actually, let's go with the high setting first because that's the kind of easiest. So the power uh, flows down through this PTC thermistor and it also the switch is in this position. So it flows down through the other PTC thermistor. So both sides are on and it also lights the high level LED, which is yellow. And that's simply got a resistor in series that I didn't actually know the value of that resistor. Oh, it's two different values of resistor. That's weird. Uh, brown, grey, yellow. That is one... Uh, 8 uh, and 4, so that's 180k. Okay, 180k. And the other one uh, is blue, grey, yellow, which is 680k. Am I right? Yeah, that seems quite high. But then that one's got a green LED uh, in it, so it doesn't require as much current. I'm just going to check that out. I'm suddenly having doubts. Let's turn up to the 2 mega ohm setting here. Let's probe those resistors. So this one I thought was 180k. It's 180k. Uh, and this one was 680k. Yes, it is. Okay. They're just using that much higher value resistor to compensate for the fact this is a gallium nitride LED green one, which is the, one of the brightest colours. And this LED is yellow, which is one of the dullest colours. There's also an element that uh, it's quite advantageous to them to, at the high, high setting, to have a little bit extra current flowing through that LED. It's useful because all the current flowing through these two thermistors and that LED is going through the fan. And it basically, so it's going through the diode, through those two th thermistors, through that LED, and then it's coming down here. And there's two Zener diodes, or Zener diodes if you prefer, which are capping the voltage, I think they've used two for power dissipation reasons but they're 7.5 volt each giving a total of about 15 volts and then there's a 25 volt 47 microfarad capacitor across that to provide smooth DC and then there's the fan and it's quite a clever design because the fan is probably not running at the full voltage the, this will certainly cap it to about 15 volts although it's a 12 volt fan but it won't ever run at that because the fan is rated about 80 milliamps uh, I did not check how much current that drew in operation I think I did earlier on I'll maybe take a look at that um, I could do that right now by con connecting it up one moment please time for some precarious probing this is uh, where I shove it and the circuit board suddenly moves and I short something out and it goes pop. Uh, the fan is actually running full whack. It's running at slightly higher in its rated voltage, 12.5. I'm thinking that in the 
enclosure, the thermistors would probably get up a little bit higher temperature, so that uh, current might limit down a bit and the voltage would fall. But it is uh, hovering around about 12 volts. It's no great deal. If it did warm up, if it was an enclosure, it would probably just drop that tiny bit lower because as the uh, the um, unit, the module gets hotter, the heater block, I'm going to have to be careful about this because this gets very hot. Uh, as it gets hot, the current tends to go down and that's what's limiting the current through the fan. It's all very nicely balanced. It's a clever, clever design. So this fan is running at marginally above 12 volts. Maybe that's why the, the Zeners are not getting hot at all um, when it's running, so that suggests they're not clamping the voltage. Initially when you power it up, and that's one of the nice features about this, even if the fan had been underrun, or if it does, when it heats up, it does go below its uh, normal voltage, that will make it run quieter. But initially when you power it up, much more current goes through these uh, thermistors because they're cold, so they'll initially start with quite a high surge of current. That's capped by the zeners, so the zeners will initially kick in, they'll be doing their job, they'll be keeping the voltage below about 15 volts. But the fan will get a boost to start it, it will actually get a sort of launched into operation. And any time you switch it to the other setting or you uh, plug it into the wall, that will get a little extra boost of current to actually boost that fan up. But I'm surprised it did actually hover at around about 12 volts, that's, that's passing quite a lot of current. So the capacitor's there to smooth it, it's got the fan, and then comes the clever bit. See when you turn it to the low setting, when you turn it to the low setting, it turns off this therm thermistor, so only half of it is heating, and that's visible when you actually use a thermal imaging camera, you can see just this side is hot. But um, when you turn it over to that position, this LED light, it's the green one to show it's at the low setting, and... It also feeds this transistor via this 120k resistor, that's the 124 resistor here, the surface mount one. And that turns this transistor on, and that just shunts out the fan. You think, well, that's a bit wasteful, but it's not. All it means is it's going to be a slightly higher voltage across the PTC thermistors, and they'll just self-regulate down a bit. It's a very, very simple circuit. Very odd that the way it works is the fan's normally in circuit until it's turned off, and then it just gets shorted out. But a very strange bit of circuitry indeed but clever. As these things usually are, it's usually the simpler they make it, they do clever tricks to derive power supplies efficiently. I was expecting a capacitive dropper, I just really didn't expect it was going to be using two uh, PTC thermistors, like using this basically as a big self-regulating resistor in series with the fan to supply the current, but I suppose given the amount of current that passes through that block, uh, that does make sense, it does make it the most efficient way to uh, use that. Very neat design, I like that. It's very smart. So there we go. Uh, that did take a bit of reverse engineering though because uh, tracing a circ double-sided circuit board like this, particularly when it's doing clever things, just makes it that little bit trickier because nothing is initially terribly obvious. I mean, you can see the zeners and you think, oh, that's definitely there across there. And then you trace it back and you find the capacitor, which is over here, is also across the fan. And then you see the transistor and you're thinking, what's that doing? And it turns out it's shunting out the fan circuit. But very neat, very clever little circuit. I do like that.